What's up everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to be fixing the floppity shifter on the Miata. After 160,000 miles and who knows of how many shifts and plenty of wiggles, it's not surprising that the shifter on the Miata is a bit worn out. This is actually a really common NA and NB issue for the Miata. At the bottom of the shifter is a small nylon cup. That cup over time wears or cracks. In addition to that, the pivot ball on the shifter also rides in these nylon bushings and those can wear out as well. So we're gonna be replacing all of that today. We're also going to be upgrading the nylon cup at the bottom to a brass piece to give it a little bit more positive feel to it. This is a pretty straightforward DIY and you'll only need some basic hand tools. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, a 10 millimeter socket, if you can find it, a 12 millimeter socket, a ratchet, an extension, a pair of cutters, some big pliers or vice grips. I ended up using a hammer and a punch. I also took this one step further and took the top turret housing off, cleaned it and resealed it, and you'll see why in a minute. If you do that, you'll also need some gasket maker, but don't worry, I'll link all that stuff down in the description. In order to help aid in installing the, some of the rubber pieces, we're going to need a lubricant. Today, we're gonna to be using WD-40, in the easy reach can with the flexi straw. And for cleaning our components, we're gonna be using WD-40 Specialist Cleaner and Degreaser. This stuff is nice because it doesn't have that really strong smell, so we can work with the garage door closed. Always great to work with WD-40, and I appreciate them partnering with me for this video. We're gonna start nice and easy by taking out this whole center console. Go ahead and open up your console. You'll find there's two Phillips head screws near the back. Hopefully your center console is not gross like mine is. We're gonna take those two screws out. Gross. Next up, Pull your ashtray out, set that to the side. There's a Phillips head screw right in the center of this one. We'll set this Phillips head screw inside our console. Next, we need to take these little screw caps off because there are screws behind them. Make sure you're careful and you don't break the cover when you're trying to pop it off. There's also one on the right and one on the left side. Once you have those two screws out, next we need to unscrew our shift knob. Next, we're gonna grab the front of the center console right where it meets the dash piece we're gonna pull that away a little bit and then up, that should pop it up. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the rear compartment of the center console and feed the trunk release and the fuel door release out. We need to go ahead and get this wire loom that's right underneath unclipped. We also need to unplug our window switches. Then we can take this whole center console piece and get it out of our way. Now that the console's out of the way, we can get to our shifter. Look at all this sound dampening, it's all just, Kind of nasty and worn out. Uh, if you're super concerned about noise, go ahead and replace this. I don't know, it's convertible, so I'm not real worried about it. Plus, you know, race car. It's a good thing we went ahead and got a new one of these rubber gaskets. Look at, this is all ripped. This is another place where, like, increased road noise, or if you have any leaks, you can actually get some smells coming into the car. I'm not worried about this stuff, but I'm glad we got a new one of these. Let's go ahead and take these four 10 millimeter bolts out. Those were not very tight. Now, since this is ripped, I'm just gonna go ahead and pry this trim off. If yours isn't ripped, you can warm this up and slide it off. Probably wanna lubricate that, hit it with some WD-40, make it easier to slide it up. Since ours is torn up anyway, I'm just gonna cut this little white ring. Get that out of the way, and we can slide this off. Notice too that our other gasket is all ripped apart as well. This is a super, super common thing right here. Next, let's go ahead and get the shifter out of here. Now you notice there's a pretty good amount of dirt and grime on here. We need to be careful. We don't wanna get any of this inside our transmission turret, but we don't really wanna go spraying and wiping it because we're gonna just end up wiping it right into here. If your gasket's not split, clean this now. This rubber piece is split like mine is. We'll clean it up afterwards three 10 millimeter bolts, and this should come right out. Go ahead and get a rag. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna lift this straight up and out. You may get some drips of transmission fluid. That's what you want the rag for. So put it in the rag and then take it to the bench. With the shifter out of the way, we're gonna work on this lower cup. Right down here, we need to get that out. You'll notice that there's these two pins that stick into this opening. We need to push one out of the way so that we can swing that cup up. I'm also noticing that there's actually some sealant down inside this turret, which makes me feel like maybe somebody's been in here at some point. 
resealed this. Typically from the manufacturer, you don't see bits of sealant just laying inside a component like this. There should also be some fluid in here, and as you can see, it's pretty much dry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this top piece off, we're gonna reseal it, we're gonna clean this so that we don't have all this goopy, oily residue on it. Then we'll go ahead and put it back together and finish rebuilding our shifter. There's four 12 millimeter bolts that hold this on. We'll take a brass drift and we'll just see if we can persuade it out a little bit. There we go. You don't wanna use something too hard because we don't wanna break this aluminum housing. This piece looks okay. It doesn't look cracked or broken or anything. Look at all this sealant. This, I'm gonna have a hard time believing this inside of here is factory. Let's get all that cleaned out. Try not to get any in the fluid. Looks like a piece of the rubber boot, I think. More big globs of sealant. Oh man. Try and clean this off while you're cleaning this off. Work real hard not to get any of this old sealant into the fluid. We're gonna take an extractor and try and suck some of this fluid out so that we don't have any up top here, but you don't wanna knock stuff into there and end up with a problem. Look at all that up on the top there. Go ahead and get some cleaner. Try and get as much gasket material off of here as you can. We wanna make sure that when we go back together with it, we get a nice good seal so that we don't have this problem again. And be mindful of what you actually have underneath the car because anything that falls down off the top of the transmission, is gonna go onto the ground or whatever you have underneath. I usually keep some cardboard under the car no matter what I'm doing, so we're good here. Next, I wanna get any of this old fluid out of the top of the turret. Number of ways you can do this, I'm gonna use this turkey baster here. Try anyway. <laughs> There's barely any fluid that I'm able to get out, so what I might end up doing, might end up just using a paper towel and wiping it out. You should have more fluid than this. I think 90 milliliters or so is about what should come out. Well, you can see we're barely getting any out of that. We're just gonna try and wipe some of this old nasty fluid out. You could also fill this up more, just fill it with clean fluid, slosh it around a little bit, and then extract the mixed fluid. In fact, I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. This is probably an overkill step, but we're gonna go ahead and do it this way anyway. Now we can extract this mixed fluid out. That'll at least get some of the dirty, nasty stuff out of there. We'll just go ahead and wipe the rest of this fluid out of here. Now that this is all cleaned up, let's move back over to the bench and work on our shifter. It's also a good time if you're gonna install a short shifter, go ahead and do it now. Let's cut this rubber boot piece off. It's already split but we're gonna just go ahead and cut it the rest of the way off. This is actually pretty thick, so the sharper the knife, the better. Let's get that off there. Now you can either pry this off, or if you wanna get rid of a little bit of this material here, that'll make it easier. Let's slide this up and over, and out of the way, cause we don't need it anymore. Next, we have these two pieces. Now we're gonna be replacing these as well. There's like a wave washer, like a plastic or a nylon piece that it's attached to. This goes at the top, so I'm gonna set it right there. Next, we gotta go ahead and take this little plastic cup off. Do that a handful of ways. If it's bad enough, you can just pop it right off. A lot of times these will crack, it'll crack like that. We broke it with the knife. We don't need this anymore because we are going to replace it with a brass piece. Next, we need to get rid of all this goop and grime off of the shifter. Also, we need to clean our turret housing that we removed and we're gonna have similar to this cup and washer on the top. We have similar parts inside of here that we're gonna to have to replace, but let's go ahead and get this cleaned up first. Got a little container here. Gonna pour some of this WD-40 cleaner and degreaser in here. We're just gonna let this soak for a little bit. And then you can either scrub it, let it soak, whatever your flavor is. I'm gonna scrub it for a few minutes because well, why not? Also, if you borrow some sort of Tupperware or container from the kitchen, make sure that you're not gonna get in trouble for it. I asked permission on this one. Once we have our initial clean done, we're gonna make sure and clean the gasket surface and get rid of any of that off of here. That part does need to be pretty clean because we want that sealant that we're gonna put on it to, to stick really well. Also, you wanna make sure this surface is pretty clean because that new rubber piece we're gonna put on does have a gasket as well. We wanna make sure we keep any oil that comes up this high, you wanna keep it inside of the transmission. All right, that's pretty much, I think as clean as we're gonna to need to get this guy. 
Next, we need to replace the inner ball seat and spring washer for the shifter. In order to get that piece out, we need to actually push one of these two pins out of the turret. So a couple of things we can do to get these pins out, we really only need to get one pushed back out of this opening here, and it doesn't really matter which one. You can take something like a nut or a washer and put it behind, has to be big enough for the pin to come all the way through it. Take a big pair of pliers and try and squeeze the pin back. That didn't work for me, it's in there pretty hard. We're gonna go ahead and put our sealant on it, reinstall it, and then we'll take a drift and just drive that pin out, do the swap of our shifter assembly, and then drive it back into place. You could also do something like warm it up and drive it out that way. If you got a way to hold it like this, you can do that and drive it out that way. Ton of different ways to do it. Something else too, because of all the sealant that that housing had on it, I'm gonna actually take these bolts, and I'm gonna run them into a thread chaser to get any of that old nasty gasket stuff off of them. So we're going to be using this ultra gray gasket maker. This is actually the same stuff that I used on the Mark III transmission when I put it together. Go around the turret, you need a very, 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 very thin layer. Remember, this stuff is gonna ooze out, so you don't wanna put too much on it and we'll, we'll end up with the same problem that we had when we started, and that's a bunch of sealant inside of our transmission. So go around, make a nice thin layer, thin bead, and when you're done, let's go ahead and put it on the car. Before we get our turret piece put back on, we need to make sure this surface is all clean, free of any gasket material, any dirt, any oil, anything like that. Go ahead and take our turret, line it up as best you can, and I like to start all four bolts, and we'll come back and tighten them a little bit at a time. Now I wasn't able to find the torque spec for these. You want to get them pretty tight. I don't even really want to guess on what it is because I don't want to mislead you. You are going into aluminum, so it's not going to be crazy, but they were on there pretty tight, so you want to make sure you get them good and snugged up. And remember, this sealant does need to cure a little bit. Follow the instructions on the sealant that you use. So before we put any oil or run the car, we want to make sure we let that sealant cure. Now that we have this turret cover fully installed, we need to drive one of these two pins out. Doesn't really matter which one you do. For me, I think it's gonna be easier to do this one just based on the space that we have and the ability to not only remove it, but get it reinstalled. I tried the plier method like you guys saw, couldn't really get it done that way. So we're gonna use a punch. And we're just gonna drive it out. Once you have that pin pretty much flush with the turret housing, we can go ahead and lift this clip on out. We're gonna grab this wavy washer and then this bushing right here that the shifter sits into. And if there's any old oil or grease or anything in here, go ahead and clean that out too. Okay, let's go ahead and get this all put back together. Now, the steps to putting everything back together are pretty important. They go like this. First, the wavy washer without the tabs on it. So we're gonna install that one. Then we have the bushing piece that has the two cutouts in it, needs to go next. One cutout goes underneath one pin, set that in. Next we need to drive the pin back through. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take a big old pair of pliers. I'm gonna actually throw a towel over this so we don't really tear the housing up. Of course, now you can't see what I'm doing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pliers, we're just gonna grab it, make sure you get on the back side here and squeeze it, and that should drive that pin back in. Next, we need to go ahead and fill our turret housing. The spec for the fill of the turret housing is 90 cc's, or right at 90 milliliters. We're using the same transmission fluid that we're gonna be doing the service with. Fill her up. That is definitely more than I took out. Next up, it is time to get our shifter assembly taken care of. Couple of things I wanna do. I wanna make sure that on the actual shifter, there's no rough spots. Like you can see there's a bit of oxidation here. We wanna make sure that it's pretty clean because we're gonna need to slip this boot over it. And we don't wanna risk tearing the boot. So we'll just take some high grit sandpaper and clean this up really, really well. If you're installing a new one or a short shifter, you can go ahead and skip this step. That is quite a bit better. Next, we're gonna take our upper shifter bushing and put the spring washer with the tabs on it. And we can just go ahead and clip this into place. There's grooves that I'll just kind of snap all as one piece. 
Then we'll take this and slide it over. We need to now put our boot on and it's got to slide over. You can see this is tapered, so that should slide over pretty easily. But what we want to do, we want to get some lubrication on that before we do that. Now, even though this is the easy reach can and you got the bendy straw guy you can use, it also sprays just like a normal spray can. So that's what we're going to use today. Really go ahead and saturate that with our WD-40. Spray this a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take this rubber piece very carefully. Slide it over. Boom. Just like that. There we go. So now when we go to put it on, all that gear oil is not going to spew out the top. Next, we're going to take a little bit of grease. We're going to grease the ball down here. We're going to grease the ball up here. Go ahead and grease that bushing. If you don't have any grease, you can just use transmission fluid, but the repair manual does call to grease this whole piece. Grease the piece. Now it is time to put our shifter in. We're going to take a little bit of that red grease. We're going to go ahead and grease up our lower seat for our shifter as well. Now we need to put our shifter in. Mine has a white dot right here. That white dot faces forward. Next, we will go ahead and rotate this and line up our bolts. Now what we also need to do is we need to get our, our upper bushing in all the way. So you may have to wiggle the shifter and get that seated. Start our bolts. Go ahead and snug those babies down. The torque spec on this, I think, was about nine Newton meters. You might not have a tiny torque wrench that goes that low. Just make sure you don't over tighten it because you could very easily strip out that turret housing quite a bit better than it was before. I'm also seeing a lot of transmission wiggle. Wonder if we need to put new trans mounts in it too. Next up, we're gonna need to clean the surface where our upper rubber bellows mounts. You can see there's a foam gasket on it. So we need to make sure the surface that the foam goes on is nice and clean. Go ahead and scrape or peel any old foam off and then wipe it down. Next, we'll install our upper piece. This just slides right over just like that. We have two holes that are closer together. Those go in the back and the two that are further apart go up front. Kind of like we did when we installed this lower one, hit this with some WD-40 and slide it on. Now you probably don't wanna just spray this while you're in your car. So spray some on a rag and that should make it a little easier. Also get that shifter lubed up a little bit. Notice we have our plastic retainer that needs to be on as well. You have to dip the front forward, lay it down, and then you can wiggle this into place. Go ahead and bolt this up, this piece down. I don't even know if there's a point to putting this on. Uh, it's, it's pretty chewed up, but since it was there, we'll go ahead and install it back. Not a bad idea if you're like super worried about it, go ahead and replace this stuff. I don't know, I don't think it's really gonna be worth us replacing right now anyway, so uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that. After you have everything bolted down and your foam in, time to install the center console. Probably should clean that nastiness out before you put it back in. Make sure we get our buttons through the little rubber grommet piece. Once you get the trunk and the fuel door released through the rubber grommet in the console, we need to plug our window switches in. Grab your connector, go ahead and plug those switches in. I would also probably take my wire grommet and snap it into place. Snap the front down, get your Phillips head screws installed. Should have two in the main storage compartment, one underneath the ashtray, and then one on each side, left side, right side, on the outside of the center console. And for our final step, let's go ahead and twist this shift knob back into place, and of course, Make sure that you line up your shift pattern on there if you have one, or if you have a different preference on how that goes, do it the way you like. All right, so not only did we fix the floppy shifter on the Miata, we went ahead and fixed an oil leak, and we resealed that turret and filled it back up with fluid considering it was empty. Unfortunately, the car is kind of stationary because we're working on some other things, so what that means is the proper way to test it is just gonna be to sit in it, shift through the gears, and of course, make race car noises. Bwah, 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 bwah. 
Bah, there we go. Now, even though mine wasn't completely destroyed, it does feel quite a bit better. It doesn't matter what kind of car, eventually these kind of components usually wear out. This is a thing we fixed on Volkswagens as well. So with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Guys, questions or comments, drop them down below. Links to all the other Miata videos will be down in the description. Big ups to WD40 for being such a great partner on this, many other builds over the years. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. Bwah, bwah.